the Sydney monorail. Originally opening in 1988 and closing in 2013, the Sydney monorail was one of Sydney's biggest tourist attractions. And in this video today, we'll be taking a look at the Sydney monorail's history and what exactly caused it to close. Opening in July of 1988 and closing in June of 2013, it served for around 25 years. Here's the full rail map and as you can see on the map just here, it's very similar in placing to a lot of existing light rail stations today on the L1, L2 and L3 lines. Delivered in 1987, six trains of the seven were built by Von Roll Holding to the Type 3 specification. Similar monorail cars were also seen in SeaWorld in Queensland. There were six separate vehicles, each seating 48 passengers in total, which accumulates to about 288 total passengers that were able to run on the monorail at once. You would expect the monorail to continue on successfully, but however, literally less than a month after opening, on the 28th of July in 1988, an electrical fault caused the system to cease operating, and 50 passengers were stranded in carriages for up to two hours between 3.50 and 5 p.m. A more notable incident from the history of Sydney monorail is on the 27th of February 2010 at approximately 4pm, two monorail trains collided at Darling Park Station, resulting in hospitalisation of four people. It's now time for a quick message from our sponsors of the video. Me, and the reason why it's me, is because I'm announcing my brand new podcast called The Bankstown Line, featuring Phil from Sydney Trains Vlogs and Shareth from the YouTube channel Building Beautifully. This podcast will come out on the 22nd of June and is a 10 episode podcast series talking about each station on the Bankstown line. I've been planning this for several weeks now and production of this podcast has now began and I hope you all love it when it comes out on the June 22nd. It will be available to stream right here on my YouTube channel on the podcast tab which will appear on the day of the podcast releasing. It will also be available on YouTube Music and on Spotify. What I'll do is I'll leave my YouTube Music and Spotify accounts in the description below if you'd like to follow them to receive the notification on when the podcast comes out. It's now time to move on to the criticism about the Sydney monorail, and that would be that a lot of people thought that the monorail was useless and was in only a single loop around the city. And this is also when they thought of ideas to build a light rail system all the way from Dulwich Hill through to the city. However, this was only operated between Wentworth Park and the city at the time of when it was opened originally. This then, this then caused the city monorail to effectively be redundant and found that the light rail was much cheaper to build compared to the city monorail. The city monorail also caused a lot of the tram lines in the city to be closed from its original state for it to then be brought back in just a few years time in 2019. And then unfortunately in 2012, the then Premier Barry O'Farrell on the 23rd of March 2012 announced the closure of the Sydney monorail in July of 2013. It was also the launch of the Monorail Removal Project Interpretation Strategy launched by Transport for New South Wales. In the final months of operation, the monorail vehicles were covered in this special livery to farewell Sydney in their closure in just a few months time. This was also a time for a lot of people to come down to Sydney and have one final ride on the monorail. Even myself had a final ride on the monorail, although I was probably a bit too young to remember that. It's now time to take a look at behind the scenes of how the monorail vehicles are maintained. This is the depot suspended above the Sydney light rail line between the existing convention and exhibition light rail stations. The way the monorail vehicles were moved around were by the special kind of crane sort of things that would move the monorail vehicles around and were able to withstand its weight. There was also a shed along with a control room above that as well where some of the line was controlled by people in that building. Whilst looking at these photos, I couldn't help but notice this monorail over here. Is this the exact same monorail that was involved in that collision a few years ago? 
As a little bonus to the video, I'll also be showing you a clip from a movie called Napoleon about a dog which apparently fled onto the streets. It was based in Australia and it was made in 1995 and there was about a one minute scene of the Sydney monorail which I'll be showing in this video now. Overall, the Sydney monorail was unfortunately taken out of service due to the lack of people using it, not to mention that it could only hold 288 people at one time using all six monorail vehicles, which just pretty much wasn't possible. This unfortunately meant that the monorail was closed on the 30th of June 2013 and was then dismantled a few months later. There was some remnants of the old monorail stations at Harbourside, although that has now since been demolished in the last six months for a new skyscraper to be built there. There are a couple rem remnants of the monorail around the city, which are hidden in some tight small places. My opinion overall on the city monorail is that I do believe it should still remain in Sydney, as although it would still cost money, it was a really good tourist attraction, as is the ferries nowadays, for example. The monorail could have even been extended out to the inner west or even to the eastern suburbs, primarily to Bondi Junction. This is only some thoughts in my head though, I have many, believe me, although this probably wouldn't happen as it would cost a lot of money and the monorail is more expensive to build than the light rail. Also, the fare prices of the monorail were 40% more expensive compared to the light rail at the time of when the light rail opened. Quite recently, a monorail vehicle was moved into the Powerhouse Museum at Castle Hill and is now on display. Here are some photos from the Powerhouse Museum website of the monorail vehicle stored and what it looks like on the interior. Amazingly, the interior has still been uh, kept quite well and it also including the exterior of the monorail. Hopefully one day we'll be able to have a look inside there sometime or even have a look at it out in the open. And that just about sums up the Sydney monorail and what went wrong. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, as I did spend quite a few days making this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. Also, let me know in the comments below on your opinions on the Sydney monorail and what you think should have happened. Do you think the monorail should remain open or do you think it should have closed? By the way, massive shout out to the original owners of any of the photos or videos that were used in this video as the only photos that are mine are the ones of myself in the monorail vehicle. Uh, I will leave the uh, original links to those videos and photos in the description below for you all to check out. So thank you very everyone for allowing me to use your photos and videos. And also one last thing, make sure you save the date for June 22nd for my brand new podcast on the Bankstown line with Phil from Sydney Trains Vlogs and Sharon from Building Beautifully. There'll be 10 episodes in the podcast and I've been working hard so you all can enjoy it. Once again, it will be available right here on my YouTube channel in the podcast section on YouTube Music, also which is located at my YouTube channel there and also on Spotify. The links to my Spotify account are on the top right of the screen right now and in the description below for you to follow it if you'd like to receive the notification on when the podcast comes out. If the podcast is proven successful, I am looking at working on some more podcasts. And stay tuned, I'm actually currently looking into a podcast on the Sydney monorail. And that's all from me. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos to come in the future. I am also looking at putting out a video twice a week now as that is a more common thing that I am able to do now. 
So thank you all for watching. Please consider subscribing or becoming a member and liking the video if you enjoyed it. Also let me know what you think of the Sydney Monorail in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys again next time.